Good afternoon my friends and happy Wednesday the 9th of March and I hope you're all doing well. I can't believe that it's already the third month of this year. It's just gone so quick. It's crazy. Now I do apologise for the radio silence. I haven't been vlogging for uh, maybe like a week and a bit, two weeks, but don't worry, all is well, we're all good here. We have just come out of the most wettest, rainiest days that Sydney has ever seen. All last week, all it did was rain, and then over the last two, three days, all it has done is rain and rain and rain and rain. And we're not talking about just like little drizzles, we're talking about heavy, constant rain for the whole day. And I'm sure many of you have seen on the news or through social media or friends or family, there are a lot of places very much close to me that have been just flooded. Whole towns up in the northern part of New South Wales in Lismore, that whole town just got absolutely destroyed and they're really struggling and then there's places close to me that have just absolutely been flooded and overrun by water. All of the river systems around where I live are all flooded. There are suburbs in northern Sydney that have been absolutely inundated by water. It's just been really quite intense. Thankfully where I live, I live in a built up suburb which is quite high and so a lot of the places that have been affected are all low lying sort of areas that are close to water sources like creeks and rivers. So thankfully we're okay, we haven't been flooded. I mean, our backyard is like a whole other story. <laughs> it is so muddy and wet and just rank. But thankfully, we haven't had any water in our house. Also, thankfully, the leak in my roof was uh, not permanently fixed, what's the other word? Temporarily fixed just before all of this rain happened. So I haven't had any rain come through, which is great. And it's going to be hopefully, well, the roof outside will be fixed in the next week or so and then the inside will be fixed but I don't know when that will happen. So for those of you who have been concerned about the leak in my roof, we've been okay. We got that sort of sorted temporarily before everything happened. So today is actually one of the very first days in like the last two weeks, I think they said, that it hasn't been raining. Well it did actually rain a little bit today, it's been a little bit spitty but there's blue sky and there's sunshine, which is insane. What is blue sky and sunshine? We haven't seen it in so long. So I think it's going to stay like sunny like this for the next maybe day or so. And then I think we're gonna have a little bit more rain over the weekend, but I'm not sure. So that's been a thing. It's so, so strange just how much the weather can really affect what you're doing. So today, happily, I've kind of got a little bit of a spark of motivation, sort of like, brewing. It's been very sparse. I have been so unmotivated to do anything. I think because one, because of the rain and also because of all of the awful things that are happening in the world at the moment. It's just, it's really hard to sort of, I don't know, get into a positive frame of mind. But today I'm feeling a little bit of the spark, a little of the, the mojo has sort of come back into the sewing room. I think where I last left you, I said I was working on a block tutorial, which was going to go into a quilt along thing. Um, yeah, that didn't happen, <laughs> obviously. I, um, I, I'm still working on it. I think it's something that I need to work on a little bit more before saying, oh my gosh, I'm going to do this without sort of thinking about it and planning it first. I think I'm still going to do the block that I was initially thinking. I did give it a try, but I wasn't like feeling it. And so when I'm not feeling something, you know, feeling, I just sort of lose motivation and interest. So that's kind of what's happened with that. Um, but I will do it. Don't worry. It's here still sitting on my sewing table and um, yeah, it's, it will definitely be the next block tutorial that's going to be happening. But I'm just... I'm going to be honest, I'm really lacking motivation in, in getting it done. But that's my problem and um, I'll conquer it when I get there. Although I just did say that I haven't had a lot of motivation to do a lot of sewing, I actually did do a little bit last week. I managed to 
finish and piece together the backing for my Christmas tree quilty trees quilt that I had been making all throughout Blogmas. So that is now ready to be basted and then quilted and then finished. But you all know me, I procrastinate over basting and that won't get done anytime soon. But it's ready to go and I'm very excited about it. Um, it's just, again, finding the motivation. My motivation has just flown away. It's just gone. And I'm trying very, very hard to sort of do lots of little things to get my flow on. But um, yeah, it's, it's it's coming back very slowly and it's it's frustrating but you know it is what it is so today's inspiration I don't know where it came from but I was just like although I have my quilty trees quilt to get finished and then all of the other things that I mentioned in my quilting goals for 2022 to like finish I really want to start a new project and I don't want to feel guilty about that I don't want to be all like oh my gosh I have all of these other things to finish but I'm gonna start something new I don't want to put that guilt on myself because I'm so desperate to find some motivation and to to do some sewing um, and to find a project that is going to like spark it back up again so I'm running with it I'm, I'm gonna go with it and see how far we go but today I had the spark of wanting to start a new quilting project and if starting a new quilting project is going to get me back going then that's what we're doing but so I was like what am I going to do then what am I what do I want to make and I've decided to make another swoon quilt I made a swoon quilt back in was it 2019 it must have been I think pretty sure it was 2019. I loved the swing quilt that I made and I eventually gifted it on to my UK bestie Aisha. I think I gave it to her as a birthday present slash sort of like thank you gift. She'd been helping me with a lot of things and was just being such a lovely lovely friend to me so I'm like I'm gonna make her this quilt and gift it to her because she had previously told me that she loved the swoon block and so I'm like I'm gonna make that and give it to her. And I did. But this time, I want to make a swoon quilt for myself. Because, you know, I do not have enough quilts that I've made for myself. <laughs> I kid, I have plenty of quilts for myself. I don't need another quilt. But I'm going to make myself another quilt. Why not? So, we're going to go on the journey of making a swoon quilt. If you don't know what a swoon quilt is, I will put up a picture of the one that I made for Aisha just here. Ding. It's a beautiful quilt pattern. It is by Thimble Blossoms and it's kind of like one of those cult classics. I think as a quilter, it's on your bucket list and I think it's just one of those quilts that you have to make, you know? And it's such an amazing block to make. They are time consuming, but totally worth it. I can remember just absolutely loving making this quilt, just going through each step. I made one block at a time, so just going through each of the steps to make half square triangles and then flying geese and then putting all the units together to create this lovely, beautiful block. It just filled me with so much joy and happiness and that's what I'm really missing at the moment. I need a project that that would just make me happy <laughs> um, and just sort of remind me of just why I love what I do. Now I'm actually not going to buy any fabrics for this quilt. Well, I'm going to try not to. I have so much fabric and I'm trying my best to shop my stash and just try and use what I have because I have so much. Now, I may have to like buy backing fabric and maybe even like a fabric for binding, but it really just depends on what the quilt looks like and all that stuff, but we'll worry about that at the end. So I've just gone through my stash and I have decided to possibly, I think, I'm like 95% sure that I'll do this, is use some of the fabrics that I have in this amazing cotton and steel sampler box. It is a collector's box full of, well, it doesn't have 40 in there anymore, but it's um, a collector's box 
that has it says delightful fat quarters of cotton and steel fabrics. I got this from a beautiful viewer. Her name is Lisa. From memory, I think she lives in Canada. And she sent me this years and years and years ago. And I was like, oh my gosh, are you serious? And I was just blown away by just how generous she was sending this to me. I'm pretty sure I vlogged it. If I can find the vlog of me opening this, then I'll link it down below. But it came just full of beautiful, beautiful cotton and steel uh, fat quarters. And I love cotton and steel. Who doesn't? They always have such beautiful, fun print fabrics. And look at that. As I mentioned, there isn't 40 in there anymore. I have used some in here. I've also gifted a few as well. But I thought it's time to like crack this open and use some of these fabrics. Their beauty is not being admired inside a box, you know, it's just sitting on my table. Let's get some of them out and, and use them. So there are some beautiful prints in here that I think I'm going to use. So I'm going to use the prints as like a focal and then possibly pair them with just a, a plain solid fabric, which leads me on to another sort of bundle of fabric that I've just had in my stash and it's this beautiful solid fat quarter bundle. These are the solid fabric range by RJR Fabrics. I can't remember what their solid range is called but this is a whole load of their colours and so I think I'm going to sort of pair them together. The quilt is nine blocks so I'll choose nine of my favourite prints in here that kind of go together. I'm really liking this one. I'm thinking of making this one sort of like as the focal inspiration. This one is by Melody Miller, it is called Playful and it's got all of those sort of um, discs on it. I used to have these as a kid in the little viewfinder and you'd click it. But I'm thinking of using this as my inspiration palette, so using some of those colours in it and um, yeah, just picking it all out and, and seeing where we go. I really like the idea of doing something dark having like a like dark sort of focused fabrics because I don't use a lot of dark fabrics or dark colors but this one is gorgeous so now that I have like noisy bird so now that I have a starting point I'm gonna pick out some fabrics and uh, yeah get going why not Alright, so here are the nine fabrics I think I'm gonna go for it's quite intense this quilt is going to be loud and busy and bright and just full of fun, which I just love. So as I mentioned, this is sort of like my starting point. And I just picked out fabrics that were kind of with the same kind of vibe as this. Now this one here isn't part of the box. This is actually half a meter of another cotton and steel fabric by Melody Miller. And it's a fabric that I bought ages ago. I actually got this in, I think, Adelaide at a fabric store there. I'll put the name of the shop on the screen because I can't remember it at the moment. But I got this from that shop and I absolutely love it. And I've always wanted to use it but just didn't know what to use it in. And so I thought, well, this is a lovely cotton and still pool of fabrics. Let's pop that into and it's such a fun little print. So... I am very excited about some of these. Some of the colours, I just uh, like this purple one here. I mean, hello. Look at all of those beautiful darling colours. Oh, I just love it. So it's going to be a really fun quilt. I have managed to match a couple of the solids with a few of them. So I think we're going to do this bright orange with this one to sort of like match with this bright orange. And then this light sort of purple. I'm going to put it with this one here that has like all these potion bottles all over it and then this sort of like light sort of sea foam green I'm gonna match with this one because I think it will sort of match with these sort of beautiful bright crosses and then this bright yellow I'm going to match with this one this one is the same print as this one but just in a different colorway all of the others I'm going to match a solid as I go I think because not all of the solids in here are kind of like the right colors so I'll have to dig through my stash to match it with all the others but we'll do that as we go so I think I might start cutting at least one block just getting a start on it 
and uh, see how far we go. Just do a nice lovely afternoon session of sewing which I'm really really needing, I'm really missing and uh, yeah just want to sort of like jump into it and get something started. So I'm going to decide which one I, I feel most inspired by to do today and uh, we'll get that underway. later on in the evening and I'm going to continue on with my first swoon block. I managed to cut everything out for it and kind of forgot like just how many pieces and how much cutting goes into just doing one block. So yeah it took a little while especially because I'm a little unfamiliar with the cutting but um the more I do the easier it will get so I'm not worried about that. So tonight I'm just going to do a nice easy breezy relaxed sort of sewing session. I'm going to first concentrate on the batch of half square triangles that you have to do for this block. I have to make 8 and 8 is 16, 20. 20 half square triangles so that should be fun. So I'll get those finished tonight and then we'll see how I'm feeling. There's a high possibility that I won't finish the block today. It's a pretty intense long make of a block. If you've made a swim block yourself you'll know but if you don't know the swim block then yeah it, it takes a while just to make one block. So we're just going to do high school triangles tonight and I'll possibly finish the rest up tomorrow. So I think I'm going to like just mellow out with some nice lovely cool jazz and just enjoy a nice lovely evening sewing session. I haven't done one for a while so I'm thoroughly looking forward to it. my friends it is now just ticked over 11 o'clock at night and it's time to go to bed. I have managed to get all of the half square triangles finished and I'm really happy with them. Um, it did take me a little bit longer because halfway through sewing them I got a call from my mum and my dad. They are currently away on holiday. They're up in the Northern Territory and they are visiting, or they've done a tour of Uluru, which is the big rock in the middle of Australia, in the middle of the desert. So yeah, they went and saw that the other day, and yeah, just sort of exploring Alice Springs and, and the area around there. So it sounds like they're having lots of fun. It's really hot in the Northern Territory at the moment, complete opposite to what it is here. <laughs> It's cold and rainy and windy. So we had a good like half hour, 40 minute chat. So hence why it is now 11 o'clock at night and uh, I'm tired. But before I leave you for today, I'm gonna come back and vlog tomorrow, don't worry. I just wanted to show you my two favorite half square triangles. I usually like to pick out two of my favorites, mainly because I like how the print has sort of, I don't know, set itself into the half square triangle really nerdy. I'm such a geek about this stuff but I don't care, I love it. This is the first half square triangle so it's just got a solid white and then the print here it says Eye of Newt. I just really like this sort of uh, 
uh, potion bottle that's on there. Really sweet. And I actually really like this little like floral motif too. And then this is the other one that I love. And I just really like the placement of the florals in the print. I love this white sort of daisy and this nice little like sprig. Oh, I just love it. It's really pretty. And this purple solar just matches so well with the colours in the print. So not excluding all of the other half square triangles, they're all very pretty but I just really liked how the print sort of turned out on these ones and they're my two favourites. So tomorrow I'm going to continue on with this block. I still have the flying geese to do and then we're going to piece it all together in their units and then bring the block together. So tomorrow we will definitely have our first swoon block done and I'm very excited about it. So I'm going to mash tomorrow's vlog in with today's. So I will see you all again tomorrow for the rest of this vlog. <laughs> good night. See you tomorrow. Well good morning my friends and happy Thursday. It's the 10th of March today and I hope you're doing well. We are back in the sewing room and we are back doing our swoon from last night. Today I am going to carry on doing the flying geese section and from there we'll piece it all together and we will have a beautiful finished swoon block today. I'm so excited to see how this block turns out because I think it's going to be beautiful. So as always I'm going to pop some good music on, get into my flow zone and uh, yeah, get sewing. Happy days! Since I last left you, I have finished all of the flying geese units and I have since sort of pieced majority of the block together. So now I have all of the bits and pieces into units all ready to be stitched together into the block. So this is what we're working with. These are my flying geese that I just done and I sewed them into sort of this section here. Oh, here we go. It's a better diagram. So I've done these sections here and I've done all of the corners. Now I've just got to piece it all together and we'll have a beautiful swoon block. bits of fluff off it. So much fluff, but here we go. Ta-da! It looks so good. I love this block so much. It looks really good. I love it. Woohoo! Oh, sweeping shot, sweeping shot. Very nice. Yeah, I'm super happy with that. There are a few little, like, bits that don't quite join up properly. Seam here doesn't quite match another one here that doesn't quite match. This one's pretty good. Uh, oh, that's not good. <laughs> no, there's that one. Uh, that one's not bad. But you know, from far away, you can't tell. And that's all that matters. Oh, and there she is in all her beauty. I popped it up on the design wall and it looks so good. I love it. It is really such a pleasure to now, one, walk past and also walk in to my sewing room and see this on the design wall. It just looks so good. I'm super happy with it. I've totally forgotten just how much I absolutely love this block. I adore it so much. It's such a great block to make. I love like the steps that you have to take. It's so like methodical and also at the same time quite meditative and soothing making this block. I don't know, I just really love it. So I'm gonna leave the vlog here. I just spent the afternoon editing it and it's a long one because I just sort of chat on and on and on and on and on about goodness knows what. So if you've made it all the way to the end of the vlog, then high five, gold star, big hug for you. And uh, you're awesome for just sitting there and just watching me bobble on about 
goodness knows what. But thank you all so much for joining me today. I am going to try my best to keep vlogging. Now that I have like a project that I feel really motivated by, I will now be motivated to vlog and share it with you. But thanks for watching and I will see you all again sometime very, very soon. Bye-bye.